So not that long ago, I got to give you guys a little bit of a preview of the first ever electrified Corvette, which was pretty cool, had some tech in it. And as I was leaving, they also mentioned, hey, by the way, you should get some seat time in the Z06, the all gas one, it's sick. And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds really fun. But also in the back of my head, I was like, but is there any tech though? Is there any tech in that Corvette? But I said, yes, anyway, so there it is behind me. So I have actually gotten to try this thing. First of all, the C8 generation of Corvette is kind of everywhere. I've been seeing them all over the road. So the opportunity to try something that's kind of been a revelation for Corvette in the same way that electric cars have been for like Kia and Hyundai. Like this thing is the most popular Corvette ever that I've ever seen. And it's the Z06, so it's a uh, performance upgrades, aero package, a whole bunch of impressive stats and numbers. But still, I wanted to see if there's any tech in it, and I'll have an answer. See, cars like this are obviously super cool, and they're fun. By the way, I'm shooting this on a new, different smartphone, so if you can tell which one I'm shooting with. But cars like this are fun, right? They are the cliche, like, track car for the road. This Z06 package has all of the craziest parts of that so if you start at the front first of all there's a ton of aero this little front splitter here for downforce is painted carbon fiber those radiators are huge there's a new center radiator here you got the led headlights huge carbon ceramic brakes you get further and further back and we'll get inside in a second but you can tell a z06 on the street anytime you see this little wishbone which by the way is more air intake for cooling the back the brakes rear brakes, huge 345 millimeter width tires back here, painted carbon fiber aero on the back, and even more with the quad exhaust. A car like this is, uh, it's built to have a lot of fun, and ideally owners are having the most fun with it on the track. But it turns out basically it takes a lot of tech also for a car like this to have multiple personalities. I talked about this in the main channel in the Ramats Nevera video. That car is electric and basically has multiple personalities. And this one kind of does in the same way. You've probably heard the other cliche of the uh, everyday supercar, which is basically the fact that a car is built for the track is the opposite of what you want in a normal everyday car that you would take to the grocery store. Hard, loud, aggressive, firm. And then going to the grocery store, you want it to be soft, relaxed, reliable. And so having both personalities in one car, well, that does take some tech effort. But let's start with the key, because if you get a car like this, you're gonna end up with a key like this. Looks pretty reasonable. You've got lock and unlock here, which will do exactly what you expect. But there's also a front trunk and a rear trunk. This is one of the first places that you'll notice that this feels a little more like an everyday supercar. So let's look at the front trunk first. Double tap there. Actually, I think I have to unlock the car and then double tap. This has always been a problem. I haven't been able to get the key to do the front trunk, so I'm gonna have to open this real quick. Hit the button, that always works. Okay, so the front trunk is backpack sized. I can fit, I'd say two backpacks in the trunk reasonably. You get the idea. It's not the biggest thing ever, but the rear trunk is real. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna hit this button right here and the entire back of this car is about to lift up to show you not just the engine, but also the rear storage. So there's your engine, and right here is a little bit of back storage in that. That is actually bigger. Couldn't quite fit my golf clubs in it, I tried. Maybe if you have a small, like, thin golf bag, you can, but there's a net here. You can do groceries here. And also, if you take the hard top off, that roof can slot perfectly down there and fit and close the top. So you can drive it as a convertible as well. So that's probably step one to being a dailyable supercar. I don't even need a lot of tech to do that. You just need the space. And then of course, remote start. So uh, let's see if the microphones on this phone can pick up what's gonna come out here. This is, uh, this is the remote start. literally not even exaggerating i was talking at normal volume that's something you i've realized you can't really appreciate through youtube videos is you can hear what the car sounds like but you can't appreciate how loud it is through a video it's just really hard to capture you can feel it in your chest 
But let me sit in this car for you and show you some of the reasonable tech you might expect. So the door handle is under there, jump inside. And it's of course pretty low, but the driver's seat of a Corvette looks pretty similar to the way it has over the past few years. Very much a cockpit centered around the driving position. This steering wheel has got carbon fiber on it and Alcantara, two screens here, all of the AC buttons. So your heated and cooled seats over here for this nice, comfortable car. <laughs> You've got cup holders and you can close those up. Drive modes, drive selector, neutral, manual, and even a front nose lift. If you look down here, you've got traction control, nose lift, cameras. It's got a full 360 camera. It's got your uh, HUD up here. This display has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And uh, Bose sound system that I was actually very impressed with. There's a bunch of Bose speakers all around the cabin. You can see them up here, see them in the door, and they sound pretty decent. Which, of course, it's a smaller cabin, so you don't need as many speakers to fill the entire cabin, but you do get quite a bit. So I was impressed with that. This is also a little bit of a wireless charger for your phone. So if you do put your phone in here, you can still have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto up there. But that's just the sort of creature comforts part of tech. But the rest of the tech in this car really comes from harnessing that drivetrain right behind you, which you can see is the engine behind me. So the engine, the numbers, are awesome. In a track car, it's exactly what you want. It's a 670 horsepower, naturally aspirated V8. It's the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 ever made in a production car. Um, it's got a seven speed gearbox, automatic transmission, flat paint, plane crank. You've heard the thing, it sounds amazing. Uh, and you'll hear that a little bit more later in this video. But how do you make that engine and this transmission and this low firm car both great on the track and also comfortable and soft and reasonable in real life? Couple things. I'm gonna try to talk over the engine. We'll see how well that works with the microphone here. Let me know in the comments how well it works, but I'm gonna turn the car on again with this push to start. It's a little bit less loud the second time. That cold start was a little more dramatic. But as we turn it on here, you get the uh, displays lighting up and then Corvette software over here on the second screen, which faces me. Now I have my iPhone played, so first thing it usually does is turn on Apple CarPlay as soon as the Bluetooth lights up. But when you're home here, you've got a decently responsive UI to go through all the software features of this car, which go from like home link programming this thing here, to navigation, to all the cameras in the car, the 360 view, making sure you don't scrape anything. All of that is built in here. But let's say I wanna drive. There's modes. I have AC driving modes for this car, and there's three main ones that are pre-programmed. They're called touring mode, sport mode, and track mode. And I see this in all kinds of cars that are like this, but especially in a car like this, which claims to be, and really is, daily drivable, there's a big difference between those modes. So this is the mode selector here. There's actually a knob underneath this thing. And I'm gonna start in touring mode, so, tour mode here you see steering suspension engine shift brake feel engine sound and ptm all of those things are pretty down low as far as as they go so steering soft lightweight uh, suspension uh, kind of soft <laughs> i won't say it's full it's not like it's some some soft air suspension like you might have in the tesla model s or something like that but it's about as soft as you could expect to feel in a car that's this low with low profile tires and all these incredibly racing oriented geometries. Now, if I switch, uh, oh, and the engine sound part as well is uh, there's actually variable valves in the back. So about as closed as they'll be, this is about as quiet as this car can be. And as you drive around, you're in lower RPM ranges most of the time. I'm idling under a thousand RPM now. And if I were to just drive around a parking lot or go get groceries in touring mode, it would never really be super loud and you could get away with not annoying anybody. Maybe not in this color, but you can get away with it. Now listen to the difference as the valves open as I switch to sport mode. A little bit of a difference, but now you've got more firm steering, suspension, engine and shifting, brake feel and engine sound. Now I'm gonna get to driving this car in a second, but you can imagine track mode, things go all the way up you ride around in slightly higher RPM ranges, around two to 3,000 RPM here, 
and in track mode, things go all the way firm. The steering gets all the way heavy. It is the firmest version of the suspension, um, which works great on a track. And uh, you get the loudest, most obnoxious shifts. You're staying in high RPM rev ranges the entire time. You don't really drive in track mode. Well, you can drive in track mode on the street, but you're gonna you're gonna be dealing with the droning sound of the engine most of the time. So uh, enough of me talking. Let's just get to what that driving feels like. So this is what it's like to drive in its absolute softest, most dailyable, reasonable settings on regular roads. Uh, and there's a couple things that I notice, and then a couple things that they're also changing that you may or may not notice. So. Number one for me is steering feel. That's one of the things you can slide up and down. This is the lightest, easiest steering that this car has. And it's just like a normal car, totally reasonable. And I definitely feel that when that changes. And there's also engine sound, which is the valves that are letting the exhaust either be wide open or as closed as possible are actually variable. And this is them in their stealthiest setting. They call it stealth in the menu. And it's obviously a little louder than a normal car, but when you hear this car with the valves open, you realize how much of a drastic difference that makes. Huge difference. So those two are really obvious to me. And then the suspension is one of the, the other big ones. The suspension, I personally don't tend to notice as much. Maybe it's because I've driven a much bigger variety of cars. So like I've driven cars that have really, really soft air suspension and then really, really firm racing suspensions just had the, the Polestar BST here, which you'll see a video on later. The difference between this car's softest suspension and its firmest, you notice it, but it's not like the softest version of this car is like a Mercedes or something. It's still a low, firm sports car, but that does also change. So I go into my mode and I turn everything down to the softest possible, lowest RPM, easy to drive way, and I could easily drive around a town like this for a while. You'll notice even the shifts like you're typically driving around at 15 miles an hour in third gear, just so you don't get the RPMs too high, the valves are shut, you don't make too much noise, you can sneak out of the neighborhood, and that's great. But you'll hear the difference immediately when I switch to sport mode. You hear the valves get a little bit louder, engine sounds a little bit louder now, RPMs are gonna start to go up a little bit, and immediately you start to hear a little bit more from the car. So steering gets a little bit firmer and you go to track mode and it gets even more firm. Uh, and suspension does also firm up and the responsiveness and how willing the engine is to bump down a gear to give you instant acceleration, way more likely to bump down a gear. But that's just the middle between touring and track. So let's just go to track, sure, why not? Traction control is still on. But now we're in track mode. And uh, everything is at its maximum. All of the menus have gone all the way up. Steering is its heaviest and most direct. You're also gonna ride above 3000 RPM all the time, which is obviously louder. And now you have this, if you're just driving at 25 miles an hour, you have this like droning sound. You're not gonna drive track on a regular road like this all the time, but you can just, you can hear and feel the difference. The suspension is as firm as it's gonna get. The gearbox is as fast and as aggressive as it's gonna get. And you are as loud and obnoxious as you can possibly imagine on a public road. This car's specialty is how loud it is. So an electric car has this like torque shelf, like basically a flat, almost flat torque curve from any RPM. So no matter where you are, if you stab it, you just get jolted forward with some torque, right? This naturally aspirated engine doesn't have a turbocharger, so it has a very steady buildup of torque through every single gear. Every time you go shift gears, you know exactly where to expect the torque. It's always building the entire time, and there's no like magic point where the boost kicks in and you just have way more torque. You're always building torque. And torque is fun. It's like, people don't talk about it as much as we talk about horsepower because the horsepower numbers are fun to compare in straight lines and stuff like that. But the way it builds it is it's really neat. And you know what? I'm glad that this is one of those cars that it doesn't lose its edge of like some of the hardcore cars that do a poor job of being everyday. 
they also have this edge of like when you drive them normally, they want you to push them and drive them harder. Like any McLaren has that feel. Like when you sit down in the low RPMs, it's just like, come on, drive faster. And I'm glad that this car doesn't lose that edge. You still have a huge difference between what we're doing now with the stealth exhaust and the crazy, super loud, exotic feel of high RPMs and, and really moving the engine to its limits. So I'm glad it still has that edge. So there you have it. There is clearly uh, a good amount of tech in a car, even if it's a gas car, even if it's a car like this, that enables those multiple personalities, that enables it to go from a low, hard, fast track car to something that you can actually manage to not be annoyed by every day, uh, is pretty impressive. Uh, it doesn't mean there isn't way more tech in some other cars that do way more computing things and self-driving things and stuff that I like to test all the time, but this was fun. It was a fun experience. Let me know what other cars I should be testing and maybe expanding my limits a little bit. This is really interesting. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.